Hello YouTube viewers and welcome to Go Figure Customs YouTube channel. And this is part three of how to make your own custom card backs. Part one was the digital art itself, the graphic art, how to do it in Photoshop. Part two was kind of underwhelming. It was how to get it printed. Part three is where the rubber meets the road. Now we're going to put it all together. I am at the printer right now and I was smart enough to go a couple minutes after they opened, so she printed them for me while I waited. Normally I have to wait a couple hours. I go do some errands. I used to go to Toys R Us, killed some time there, but I can't do that anymore. So let's have a look at the card. All right, so got it printed on our 100 pound silk. And there it is. This is the card that we made in Photoshop. The G.I. Joe card that we made in Photoshop on the video. We also did one Star Wars card, as I recall. And here it is. Not bad, huh? I think that looks pretty nice. All right, so what's our next step? Our next step is to get these <laughs> is to get our boy Jacko Rabbit here to stop nudging the camera while I do the video. Our next step is to get these trimmed up. I use a roller a roller cutter and I will here's a picture of one. I, I don't have my own. Uh, so I go to the local Kinko's FedEx and use theirs. Uh, I prefer to do it this way instead of using sh uh, scissors which a lot of times scissors have kind of a texture to the blade and won't give you a smooth clean cut and uh, I prefer to this prefer the roller trimmer over um, an exacto knife because you really need to use a ruler with an exacto knife and sometimes if your exacto knife is really sharp it can take the edge off your ruler and thereby not giving you a clean straight cut and once you've assembled the card because as you can see, the card was fairly floppy, so the next step after trimming these is going to make that card thicker, like the cards that your figures come on in the stores. And trimming that by hand is really difficult with an X-Acto knife. It's really hard to get a smooth, straight, clean cut. So I'm gonna use this roller trimmer. Um, I kinda like to get my own, but I don't have a lot of room to set one up and they are kind of expensive and it's not really hard to find one uh, usually any office supply store will have one that you can use obviously Kinko's and FedEx uh, is a, a good place to do it um, and then once you've trimmed the cards they should look like this all right so we're outside the Kinko's I don't have a cameraman so it would have been really hard to show you a video of me actually trimming the cards but you did see the a uh, couple pictures of the roller printer um, and what the cards look like before and after I trimmed them uh, the roller printer like I said is the best way to do it it's the quickest way to do it it's the cleanest way to do it um, it can be difficult to source one um, but it honestly is the best way, sorry, it's the best way to do it. So let's have a look at the cards. All right, so uh, the first card I did, and you can see it's kind of, there's still some flash at the top there. That's not a problem because we're gonna trim that down later after we start the assembly process. So here's the card, hopefully this, uh, for one of the customs that I've done and that's what's nice about what's kind of cool about uh, the batch of cards that I've made today is that I have customs made for all of these cards already finished so we're gonna assemble all of these all the way through today here's one I did for my serious black figure here's my Matt Graver from Sicario came out nice Okay, well this figure's not quite complete yet. So I guess we won't be doing this one. I'm looking forward to having that one done. And then my Alejandro. 
from Sicario. And then the one we made in Photoshop. And I do have this figure mostly made. It's about 90% done, but thanks to the beauty of editing, by the time we assemble this, she will be done. So we'll assemble this one all the way through. And then of course, the Star Wars card that we made earlier in Photoshop in the first video. Uh, one of the things, uh, interesting things to note about this card uh, is the picture that I, I used for this. Uh, I took that in Afghanistan. All right, so. So that is the cards trimmed. Now we do the assembly. And let's talk about what you need to have, the supplies that you need to actually assemble the cards. Right, we've done the graphic art. We've got our cards made and printed. We've got them trimmed. Now it's time to do the assembly. So let's look at what we need to do to put it all together. First, what we're going to do is glue them to ordinary comic book backing boards. And to do that, we're going to use an aerosol glue. This is the first glue that I bought. I found it at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, I have not been able to find that particular brand again, even though it's 3M. So this is the stuff that they had in its place. It seems to work just as fine, just as well. So what we do is spray the, the card and glue it to a backing board. And then I use a paint roller without the, the brush and flatten that card to the backing board. So due to lack of a cameraman, I can't actually shoot this while I'm doing it, but this is the finished product here sprayed the back of the card we got printed and set it down on the comic book backing board and using the paint roller just rolled it down so what i'm going to do with it now is i'm going to put it under a stack of really heavy books just to get that pressure on there to make sure that that card really gets glued on there tight and uh, evenly and i'm going to let it set while i do the other cards now, as you can see with this card, that it's not on there evenly. There's a, it's on there crooked. And you know what? It doesn't matter. Because what we're going to do once we get all of these, uh, once we get all the art glued to the comic book backing boards, is we're going to go back to Kinko's, and we're going to use that roller trimmer, and we're going to trim off the edges of the comic book backing board. So there's two sides to a comic book backing board. One is a more glossy side and one is a more matte or flat side. Which side do you glue it to? Honestly, I don't think it really matters. I tend to glue it toward, glue the art onto the glossy side. You know, it, it's gonna get trimmed down and it's gonna hang on a wall. So like I said, I don't think it really matters. Uh, I don't do uh, a back. I don't make a, a second card to glue to the back. I've thought about doing that, but since I hang all of my finished product on a wall, it would never get seen, so there's not really any point in doing that. I have thought about making uh, a stock back card that would go on all of them, that would show, you know, like collect, er collect all of these figures, but I just never got around to it. And like I said, everything gets hung on a wall so no one would see it. So here's the Star Wars card we made in a previous video. And it was for one of the Republic Commando customs that I made. And it occurred to me while I was gluing this together that all of my Republic Commando customs are on a stock card that I made specifically for Republic Commando Customs. So 
this particular card is not going to get used. In fact, I probably won't even trim. I don't see the point in even trimming it beyond this. Uh, let's take a look at those Republic Commando custom cards and talk about those for a minute. So here displayed on the wall is my customs. Uh, these are the Delta Squad customs that I made. They're super articulated. There's Boss and Fixer and uh, Sev and, of course, Scorch. And then, of course, the guy that we made the card for in Photoshop originally. Now, these cards, you'll notice, have uh, an edge to them that I to make it look like it's die cut. And you'll see even on this one, there's some edging that it's not very clean, especially looking at it from the top. Looking at it like right in there, you can see it's not very clean. That's one of the reasons I don't make cards like this very often is because you have to cut them with an X-Acto knife. And you're cutting through not only the thick 100 pound silk paper that you printed your cards on, but also the comic book backing board, which is quite a chore. So I don't, I don't, I, I like how these look in the end for the most part, but if you don't get the cuts really nice, then they tend to look kind of half-assed. So I don't tend to make die cut looking cards like this. All right, so we've got all the cards glued together and I've got them sitting underneath my far side collection book here to you act as a weight to really press down the, the uh, card into the comic book backing board. Uh, I usually let it sit about 15 minutes uh, or until, you know, until the glue is really cured very well. And here we go. This is the results. And so there's our card. So now it's back to Kinko's to trim the edges off of these. All right, back from Kinko's, and we have, I've done the final trim. I've trimmed the backing board down to the card art, and that's what we have. We have our final card. Now what we need to do is get the figure on the card. And there's any number of options to do that. Uh, one of the places that I get supplies from is Empire Blisters. I think it's EmpireBlisters.com. I couldn't, I'm not positive on that. Don't worry, there'll be a link in the notes for that. And they make these nice, fine little blisters here. Um, the only thing that I have a problem with those is that Empire Blisters is a reference to Empire Strikes Back, which means Star Wars figures. These are reproduction Star Wars blisters. Unfortunately, they tend to be very limited on size because they are meant for the original Star Wars figures. So any of my bigger customs do not fit in these, unfortunately. They have another blister and it's about IG-88 size. I haven't checked for a while to see if they have different blisters and I'm still shopping them around. I know there's other options out there, I just haven't found them yet. The other thing that I get is off of eBay, and it's the figure display cases. These little cases here, clamshells that close up, and you can use those as well. One of the other things I haven't tried yet is I bought a couple of the uh, Devil's Toys uh, War of Order figures, and they came in these nice little uh, stuck together here. This nice little blister, display blister. 
that you could slide a card down in. So I'm probably going to use those two at some point in time. A little Goo Gone will take off the stickers. And it'll be a fairly simple thing to just slide a card, measure, make sure I get the card the right size and just slide it in there. The kind of the downside of that is it's, uh, I only have two of them. I only bought two of the figures. So it's a one and done. I may or may not use these. Chances are I probably won't use these because I like all of my customs, all of my stuff to be uh, universal. I like it all to look like it's from the same toy line, kind of the same manufacturer. These, since I can't get these on a regular basis, I probably I won't actually use them because they won't look like anything else that I do on a regular basis. The other thing that you can use is blisters from previous figures. And you can see the downside of this is you've got to clean off the card before you can use it. So if you can get the blister off the card cleanly, uh, I've heard people say to steam off the blister then that is a fantastic option because they come in any number of sizes. The G.I. Joe 20th Anniversary figures are a good example of that. They came in any number of different sizes, especially for larger figures, because some of those figures came with tons of accessories, and, some, and they were all, uh, not all of them, but a lot of, were, a lot of them were different sized. So they would be an easy resource, and uh, I don't think the 20th Anniversary figures, some of those figures are not very expensive to get, so even if you wanted to buy a carded figure off of eBay just for the blister, it's fairly cost-effective. However, as you can see here, there is still gunk on this blister from the card that it was on. And judging by what's on there, it looks like it was on a Star Wars card. So Star Wars would also be a, a viable option, since they had uh, the newer Star Wars figures also had different sized blisters. Um, I've tried Goo Gone, I've tried Peroxide, I've not found anything that really cleans these, cleans the, the card off the blister 100%. I'm still working on, on that. Once I have that problem solved, then I think that will solve most of my problems of, ha of needing unusually, so unusual sized blisters is to be able to, to clean the previous card off a of pre-existing blister. I have, I still have a ton of 25th anniversary G.I. Joe figures carded that I don't, don't, probably won't ever use and probably won't ever sell and would be happy to open them just for the blisters and trade the figures off. All right, so now we need to get the blisters onto the cards with the figure. Actually, before we attach the figure with the blister to the card, we're going to address one, I won't call it a problem, it's more of a solution that I've come up with. If you'll notice that any of your carded figures, professional figures from Hasbro or Mattel, the cards, you'll notice, will have rounded edges. And of course, when we print these off, they do not have rounded edges. There's two ways to do this. You can round off the corners in Photoshop. It's an extra step. It takes a little bit longer. I started doing that when I, I started rounding my corners off in Photoshop when I first started doing these and then trimming them by hand. As you saw the, how kind of, I won't say, well, it's almost sloppy, the clone custom cards were, you can see why I don't like trimming stuff by hand. So instead, I have this little corner clipper. And don't worry, there will be a, uh, it will, there should be a link to uh, this. I think I got it off of Amazon. Uh, there will be a link to this in the notes. I got to remember to put all the correct links to, for everything in here. Uh, and I'll put a link for the blisters too. So I am going to, I can't do this with, I don't have enough hands to, to clip the corners on the video. So we're gonna stop the video for a second. I'm gonna clip the corners and we'll start it back up to have a look at it. 
All right, so there's the serious black card with the corners clipped. It literally took me five seconds to do that. Well, all right, maybe five seconds per corner, but still, it's a lot easier than the 45 minutes it would take me to trim it by hand, and it's a lot smoother and a lot cleaner for the most part. Occasionally, you'll get kind of a, a rough edge on the, it'll leave a rough edge if you get the card in wrong. Since I'm not selling these, they're going to hang on a wall. Not very many people are going to see these. I don't really care. It doesn't need to be perfect for what I'm doing. All right, so the next thing that I have changed since I've started doing these is the peg hole, which would go right about here. I used to have, I still do, I used a template in Photoshop and put a peg hole there. I think I couldn't ever get it to look like an unpunched card. So what I would do is I had the peg hole uh, white background. Since these hang on a, a wall, the peg hole will match the background of the wall then. But I've been looking for a better solution to that because... I just, I, I kind of wanted punched holes, and I couldn't find a thing to do it. And I finally found a die, or a, a punch, to punch my JPEG, or my peg holes in. So I'm going to do that real quick, and then we'll start the video back up. Alright, so there it is with the hole punched. Unfortunately, it kind of took off the top of the P, but... You know what? I'm all right with that. This is, like I said, it's not, I'm not doing this for a customer. This is my own thing. It's going to hang on a wall. Nobody's ever going to see this again, pretty much. I don't care. The one thing that I, so with this, I will suggest keeping in mind while you're putting your card together in Photoshop is to remember that you are going to trim your cards on the corners and you are going to put a JPEG or a peg hole in yours. Well, I mean, you can, but if you if you are going to, to trim your corners and put a peg hole in, that you need to keep that in mind when you when you do your layout, when you put all your art together, is you, you need to remember that those those elements are going to be trimmed out and not to have anything important in there. Uh, like the figure bubble itself, I've had too far over and I've trimmed it when I cut the cor trim the corner. So you need to leave room on the edge around the edge for the blister to go on like so. Now to attach the blister, I am using just straight old super glue. Uh, I've seen some people using, uh, recommending double-sided tape. I uh, haven't tried that yet. I think it probably is a better solution I think it's uh, 0.5 millimeter double-sided tape. Um, I'm gonna look into that, but you know, like I said, it's for me. This works. Uh, I can't use super glue accelerator like I would normally use on uh, my customs, so it needs to sit after I glue the bubble to the card, and optimally a little weight on that give or take, I, you know, some of these blisters are not very strong, so I wouldn't put too much weight on it, but just enough to press the edging into the card so it stays on. One of the nice things about if you're going to use these figure display cases, what I'll do is I'll trim off the peg hole around the edge of the top of the clamshell, and then glue the back of that to the card and then your card can be opened and you can remove the figure from the card which I think is fairly useful. That's another thing that you've got to keep in mind while you're doing your layout is how big your figure is and how big the blister is that you're going to use because some of your elements This one, you can see if I had to use this one, 
the edge of the blister is going to go right into where the name is. And I'm thinking my Sicario cards might need to be redone because I'm not sure that the figures are going to fit in these smaller blisters. So I may have to use a bigger blister, and if I have to use a bigger blister, the blister may go into the name. Unfortunately, the name, I kind of did the layout so it didn't run into the gun. I may have to redo my Sicario cards. I'm not sure yet. But anyway, back to the serious Black figure for a moment. We're going to do this one since everything's ready to go. And of course, we'll do the Don uh, Morano card here in a second as well. But I'm just going to super glue these on. All right, I've used super glue and I've super glued the bubble down to the card itself. Super glue is not my favorite medium to work in. It gets everywhere and never where you want it to. Everywhere you don't want it to and never where you do want it to. But it does work. It looks a little wet right now around the edges. Don't worry, that will dry. There you go. There's your carded figure. So, we've done the art graphic art in Photoshop. We've had them professionally printed at our local printer. We trimmed the cards down at Kinko's. We used an aerosol glue to glue the the printed part onto a comic book backing board. We went back to Kinko's and used the roller cutter to trim it down. We used a, a punch to trim the corners and a different punch to put the peg hole in. And we used a blister from Empire Blisters and a little bit of super glue. Uh, like I said, I am gonna look into a double-sided tape because I think it will be a lot easier to work with than super glue. And we've put it all together and there's a carded figure. All right, so at this point in time, I have one more thing to do to this figure, which is the one that we did, the card that we made in Photoshop in the previous video. So I'm gonna go do that one last thing. I'm gonna take some pictures of that figure, and then through the magic of editing, in just a few seconds, you're going to see that figure carded with the corners trimmed and the peg hole in place. Here, for example, here, for example, is a exa uh, example of the horrendous lack of planning. You'll notice that I put the bubble too close to the corner. And then when I glued my blister on, I got it too close that I can't actually trim that corner now. And then when I put my peg hole in, it went through right, right through the Marvel Comics logo. So, part of this is just poor, it's not so much poor planning, it's just being lazy. Because this, I, this background is the actual comic book that I used. And if I have taken some time, I could have, sourced different images. There's a poster without the logos that I could have used for the background and then superimposed the logos. And if I'd have put a little more work into this, I could have made the space for the peg hole without it overlapping the, the, any of the elements in the background. And I should have trimmed the corner before I glued my blister on. So these are lessons learned. You know, make sure that your card is going to be, the layout of the card is going to support what you want to do in the end. Sometimes it's hard to see that as you're making it. So you have to know what your, what your products, what your end goal is going to look like before you make it and as you make it to make sure it comes out how you want it. Now here's an example with a little more forethought involved. I knew what bubbles I wanted to use, so I knew where to put, where, I, where I wanted to put their names. I knew that I was going to center the Sicario logo, so I knew that I didn't want to put my, JPEG, my peg hole there. I also trimmed my corners before I glued the figure down in its bubble. So I was, I knew my 
peg hole would be off centered, which is fine because they're gonna I'm gonna hang it on a wall anyway. It doesn't have to be centered. Um, I knew what bubble what blisters I wanted to use. I didn't know if they would work with the figures though. Uh, there's two different sizes. There's three different sizes. There's like a droid Ewok size and then a small figure and then a larger figure, and I think there might be a fourth size for like IG-88 size figures. But these are the Empire Blister, Empire Blisters, Blisters, and these are the new Marauder Task Force contractor figures. So this answers one question. Will the Empire Blisters work with Marauder Task Force figures? And that answer is unequivocally yes. The other thing that I will point out is you can see their guns in there. Make sure you have all of their equipment. Uh, like here we can see Sirius has his wand in his hand. Make sure you have all of the gear that you want to go with your figure, with your finger in its bubble, in the blister, before you glue it down. I made that mistake on my uh, World War II Captain America. I gave him a Tommy gun and I didn't have it with the figure and I glued the blister down with the figure and his shield but without his Tommy gun. Now I did have a second card since I do print out two copies of that card so what I could do is use that sec remove him from that blister take off remove him from the blister use the second card that I have printed make a new card trim it down and put them on a new, use a new blister and glue them in with this Tommy gun. Which I may do at some point in time when I'm not so lazy and, and a little bit more motivated. All right, all that remains is to do the Don Morano figure. Now you can see I've already gone ahead and trimmed the corners and I put the peg hole in the center. I knew it was gonna interfere with my logo but I'm fine with that. I kind of dig the overlap. Like you can't see to make it look like she is standing in front of my logo, but behind the name and figure bubbles. There's some some like almost, I won't, I won't call it 3D effect to it, but sort of 3D effect to it. Because my logo is in front of the Cobra, but behind her. So for my peg hole to go right through that, you know what, I'm okay with that. So the next step is to glue her down to the glue, put her in her bubble with all of her equipment and put her on her card. And there you go. Start to finish. There's our card for our Don Morno Snake Eyes variant, or er, Storm Shadow variant figure. You saw us make the Xiaomi make the card art in Photoshop in the second video. First video, of course, was the Star Wars card. And subsequent videos, we printed it out. And this one, we put it all together. And there it is, all done. And there you go. I think that answers the most frequently asked question I get for this sort of topic, and that is how do I make my own custom cards? The biggest hurdle is just having Photoshop. Honestly, it's not that hard to use. Yes, there's a learning curve to it, but man, if I can figure it out, anybody can figure it out. And the stuff that you're doing in Photoshop barely scratches the surface of what that program is capable of so it's only as difficult as you want to make it i'm sure my cards could look a hundred percent better if i really knew what i was doing in photoshop and i don't but for what i want for what i like for what i'm happy with i'm getting the results that i like and that i want once you've got the art done in photoshop you just need to take them to somebody to get them printed on that 100 pound silk paper and trimmed down, glued to a comic book backing board, trimmed once again, and then 
make sure you've got your figure with all the accessories on a in a blister that will fit and it will fit with the art that you've designed and with either tape or glue put that blister on there and that's it as I said in the previous videos I do use templates in Photoshop so if you want templates let me know if you have further questions comments be sure and sound off below please like and share the video uh, and I'm always open to suggestions for further videos so let me know what else you want to see until then have fun making your own custom cards.